board members are present. Uh, do we have any announcements this I have, morning? I have a couple of announcements. Uh, last week I had an opportunity to attend a couple interesting meetings. Um, last Wednesday at Buffalo State, there was a conference called uh, Education 2030. Uh, Mary Ellen Iliar, our State Commissioner of Education, was there, some other uh, great speakers. Uh, there were 160 people in attendance, a brand new facility at Buffalo State. It hadn't even been uh, uh, the cut the ribbon yet, but it was, it was a great facility. Um, and one of the things they talked about, there were speakers from IBM and Xerox, and uh, one of the things uh, they talked about, not just to be forward thinking, but future thinking. And uh, the 2030 theme came about because last year when they were talking about putting this together, that was the kindergarten class would graduate in 2030 next year. So that, that was interesting. They did three or four of those across the state. And then just one other quick thing. Uh, I'm happy to be back on the uh, Erie County Association of School Boards legislative team. We met last uh, Thursday. Uh, we just reviewed some of the summer meetings that uh, the group has had with some of our local legislators. Uh, another thing they're going to talk about, uh, trying to uh, urge the state to do a 50% uh, funding, their share of funding. And we talked about some upcoming uh, legislative roundtable and other advocacy groups. So uh, that'll meet a number of times during the year, and I'm pleased to be back on that. So thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have anything? Uh, first uh, formal item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda for this evening. Can I have a motion? So moved. A second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. <clears throat> in our packets, we have uh, uh, meeting minutes from the Board of Ed uh, meeting uh, and the executive session on August 27th. If everybody's had a chance to review, could I get a motion to approve in a second? I'll make a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. All right, uh, we have uh, we come to our first of our of two public comment sessions for this evening. If you have anything uh, to add at this time, if you'd approach the microphone and state your name and address, and again, we'll have one a little bit later on as well. Okay. Seeing no one jumping up, uh, uh, we, again, we have the second opportunity a little bit later on. Uh, to my knowledge, we have no unfinished business. Uh, so with that, uh, Dr. Hicks, the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Fuchs. Uh, we're going to recognize some special kids today. Uh, and Mr. Smith, we're going to turn it over to you. All right, thank you. Um, you know, frequently when I'm out and about, I'm asked about Clarence. And the question usually is, you know, what are you most proud of? What do you like the best about Clarence? And I got to tell you, it's our kids. And the story that I have to share with you this evening um, exemplifies why our kids are so fantastic. So I, I'm not going to tell this story uh, because I don't know that I would do it justice, but Trevor Howell is going to tell this story. So Trevor, why don't you come on over here? So I'm here today to, and I don't know why I'm nervous. I don't get nervous public speaking, <laughs> but I was sitting there, my heart went racing, and I don't know why. I don't get nervous doing this. Um, but today I'm here to talk about singing with Robert and meeting Maureen and how that whole story went to be. Um, I met Maureen through um, actually landscaping and went over to trim her bushes and little did I know that day would become probably a day that has changed my life going forward and it's really something that I'm, I'm never going to forget this moment. But I was out trimming Maureen's bushes and we all got, I got finished up and she asked me a little bit about um, like what I do and kind of stuff like that. Ask me if I played basketball, which is what I hear from everybody. Um, <laughs> no, I don't play basketball. Um, I told her I don't have time for basketball. I'm very involved in the choir programs. And through that, she ended up asking me if I would, me and Cindy David, who was actually working with me that day, if she would ask if the two of us would go upstairs and sing to Robert. Um, we didn't know much about Robert. And then she ended up explaining to us he has frontal temporal dementia. Yeah, um, and he has very, he's not, he's no longer mobile. Um, he can't walk himself, he can't do a lot of his things himself. He can still eat and drink himself, but most things he's unable to do by his own. And he, he doesn't, he remembers very few things. He can have conversations on a very rare occasion. He doesn't speak very much at all, but he's still a person. And that's something that's really cool. But when we went up there, he was laying in his bed and didn't seem to have too much to him except for being there in the bed. And she asked us if we knew a few songs or something we want to sing to him. And then I asked my way and 
yeah, see, <laughs> he knows my way. Um, we started singing my way and pulled out the lyrics and everything and started singing along with the recording. And um, as soon as we started, he kind of sat up a little bit, looked at, kind of looked around, and then within 30 seconds of the song, he starts mouthing the words. And then within another 30 seconds, he starts singing along. And he doesn't, it's unbelievable how music can bring back memory and bring back something that seems almost completely lost from somebody. And he seemed to come back to life just through hearing the music. And that was an unbelievable moment for me. And that's when I knew I had to do something with it. Um, as me and Sydney went outside to finish up working, um, I had the idea of maybe getting a group together. And me and Sydney talked about it and then brought it up to Maureen. And I ended up getting the group of eight people here, which I love you all. Um, <laughs> but I uh, set up a little group chat and I texted a bunch of people and said, hey, whoever can do it, let me know kind of thing. There's, it doesn't need to be like all official. We can come up with a few times of practice or something like that. And these guys sitting right up in this row, except for my parents, of course, <laughs> but um, decided that they would love to do something like that. And the kids who couldn't, a lot of them had to go off to college, but were so unbelievably supportive of the idea itself. Um, the eight of us got together, practiced a few times, uh, worked on the music on our own, and we went off to perform for Robert. We, we chose five of his favorite songs, or five, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we performed each of them with at least a four-part harmony, except for Edelweiss, because we couldn't figure that out. <laughs> so we all sang the melody for that. Um, and then we added a few of our own from Corral or from other different groups that we did um, throughout the chorus department. And I think all of them, including me, has just noticed that when we began to sing that music, you changed a person. A person that seems to almost be there, but not fully be there, come 100% to life. It was, I, I can't talk about it without uh, almost crying, I'm almost crying. <laughs> but it's something that has changed my life, and it's something that I don't think I'm ever gonna forget. I mean, I'm writing my college essay on it right now. It's a moment that is unbelievable because this is something that you don't get to do every day. This is something you don't get to experience every day. I do community service too much. I have over a thousand hours of community service and I'm a senior in high school. But something like this is not like anything I've done before. I've been, I've worked in homeless shelters. I've been in different parts of the country working on community service. I've done everything I can to help others, but nothing like this. Nothing, nothing like this. And little did I know the day when I was cutting Maureen's bushes would be probably one of the biggest life-changing moments of my life. And it's something I will never, ever forget. And it's, I'm so blessed to have this opportunity. And it's something I'm, I'm glad that happened. And I'm glad I got to share it with these people right here. So that's the gist of what I got. <laughs> So, Trevor, we're incredibly proud of you and the other students. We want you to help us out. Trevor, we want you to help us out. So stay over there by Mr. Smith. <laughs> and our board president, Mr. Fuchs, is going to come up with Mr. Smith. And we have some certificates. And Trevor, maybe you could just introduce each one of the students and we can a give them a certificate. Okay. Do you want to say that? We'll go one at a time. OK. Alex Renzoni, a junior at high school. And in blue, Brian Renzoni, junior at Clarence High School. Morgan Kraft, a freshman at ECC. Sydney David, freshman at ECC. Alexa Weary Marzinkowski, a sophomore at Clarence High School. Morgan Mincer, senior at Clarence High School. And Maddie Marsala, senior at Clarence High School.
if we can have you guys um, line up for a quick photo. And Maureen, if you would stay with them for the photo. Very proud of you guys. Um, they did not do this for community service. Uh, they, they did not do this for one of their classes. They did it because it was the right thing to do and it touched a, a human's life. And thank you guys for doing that. I appreciate that. Okay, second for the superintendent's report, we have um, student council members here to talk about their activities for the year. I see we have Mr. Andrews, our new student council advisor, so I'm going to turn it back over to you, Mr. Smith. All right, well, I'm going to invite our uh, student council officers, uh, Emerson Adams, Chloe Esch, uh, Michaela Fuchs, and Anna Geiger to talk to you about what their plans are for our student council. Come on up, girls. Uh, oh, and we'll, we'll have Mr. Andrews join up. <laughs> I figure after that it's going to be a little hard for them. I'm a little nervous after that uh, piece. But um, one thing I want to say is the, one of the great things is about two-thirds of those students were involved with student council either while they were here or currently. So there's a lot of crossover between the kids doing wonderful things here. So Mr. Smith asked us just to come and give you a little rundown on some of the events we're doing. So I'm going to let uh, our wonderful officers give you a, just a little rundown on some of the things we're doing. Um, it won't be everything because we would probably take an hour and a half to go through all of the different things that we're going to do this year. Um, one thing I would say though is please, um, to all the board members, all the administrators, you're more than welcome at any event we do. We'd love to see out there um, supporting the kids. It's just a good way to see kids in a different atmosphere than walking through a school. So at any point, you're more than welcome to come to anything that you guys wish to. So. Um, hi, my name is Anna. I am the student council secretary and one of the events of student council that we're very proud of is the orientation which we had last or this August and we're very proud of the fact that we're promoting unity between grades. So we have ice breaking activities where we combine grades into four mixed groups and we'll just, uh, you know, we'll get to know each other um, and we'll eat together afterwards all together. Once again, we're all mixed. Uh, getting conversation. Afterwards, each class goes through separate meetings to discuss plans, early plans for homecoming, and each one of us goes to a class, so we mediate between the big student council and them, so everyone gets a voice, and this will continue throughout the year as well. Hi, I'm Chloe. <laughs> Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about homecoming. So kind of like Anna said, um, we're trying to make this more unified type of thing, like one Clarence kind of theme, um, bringing the grades together. In the past, homecoming week has been a lot of competitions between the grades. And while that's really fun and we still want some of that, we want to make it more unified. And instead of grades cheering against each other, we cheer for each other and against the other schools. <laughs> um, so Monday of homecoming week is powder puff and Wednesday is Mr. Clarence which we're really excited about then we have the pep rally on Friday of course and we're kind of like I said we're hoping to keep some of the same competition but also 
um, with like the unified club, we're gonna do the, the wobble dance again and that's really fun. It's kind of more about unifying the school. So yeah, it should be good. <laughs> So another event that student council runs is the Blood Mobile, which is organized through the Red Cross. Um, 16 through 18 year olds can donate blood and each year has been very successful, um, especially in our community outreach and our leadership opportunities for students who participate through our organization. Um, and we take care of others very well, especially if anyone faints, which rarely happens, but we are there <laughs> with food and snacks, so. Um, my name is Michaela Fuchs, and I'm a senior here at the high school, as well as our student council treasurer. The event that I will be covering today is Kids Night Out. Kids Night Out is a time-honored tradition here at the high school, and it occurs every December, and it has also happened for a number of years. It is a night filled with fun and exciting winter-themed games for the elementary school students. Th this event is so unique because it is involved with many members of the community both in the high school and just in Clarence in general. To start with, our student volunteers are not just from student council, but from the student body as a whole. They each demonstrate a number of valuable qualities, including leadership, kindness, and responsibility. Then there's the integral role of the teachers who take time out of their busy holiday season in order to act as chaperones to help the evening go smoothly. For the parents, this evening hopefully serves as an opportunity to take time for themselves during this busy holiday season, as well as provide their children with an opportunity to enjoy a memorable evening. For the children, we work hard to plan an enjoyable evening that allows them to play with their friends, to do some holiday crafts, and to possibly enjoy a cupcake or two. In the past, we have made things like reindeer candy canes, paper snowflakes, and hot chocolate bags. We also play games such as shovel your driveway <laughs> where the children toss and slide stuffed animals to the other side of the room as their teams compete to try to see who has the fewest number of stuffed animals when the time is up. I can certainly speak for myself as well as on behalf of the other student volunteers when I say that this is a memorable evening for all involved. We can't wait to continue this tradition this December with yet another successful kids night out. Hello, my name's Emerson Adams, and I'm the student council president. Uh, I'm a senior here at Clarence High School. So um, one of the things we really want to implement with student council this year is community outreach. And as Michaela talked about, one of the ways we do that is with Kids Night Out. But another way that we want to do that this year, which is in its very early planning stages, but we want to um, initiate more of a connection to the elementary and middle schools by instilling leadership qualities in them and having different events where we can teach them leadership and empowerment and uh, improve that connection between the high school, middle school, and elementary school. Um, we're thinking maybe if we were to have an event like that, it would be around springtime. So even though it's in its early standing planning stages, we'll give you more information as we know more. But uh, um, also, another event that we've been doing for a long time is Senior Citizens Prom. Um, it's always a really fun event. Uh, Usually uh, vocal jazz, jazz band, and sometimes other musical groups are really involved in it and they play music uh, during the prom for the senior citizens to dance to or just in the background for them to eat to. But it's a really great way to get the community involved because we have the, the prior event, the younger uh, students of the community, but then this way we can also involve the older community members. And we work together with NHS and others to put this event together and it's a really special evening for those involved and for the community members that are able to come. So those are two events that we're really proud of in student council and thank you. So as you can see, we try and give them as many uh, leadership opportunities. We're trying to connect to the community. Um, one of the challenges, um, all, everyone knows Mr. Starr who was here for the last 75 or so years as the student <laughs> council uh, advisor and uh, we're trying to, uh, keep all of the wonderful things that he put into place, but also evolve things um, so that the leaders, as you can see they are, can really take on things that they're interested in and have passion about and uh, become part of both the school and the Clarence community. 
on a whole. So thank you again for your support. Again, anything you wish to come to, please do. Um, you can usually find us, although we're all in about 100,000 things, so uh, sometimes we're all over the place. But thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. I just wanted to, to say our student council leaders do a fantastic job. They have a great vision for what they want to see happen in their senior year and the legacy that they want to leave at our high school. Uh, this, this notion of one Clarence is an excellent idea and uh, we're going to do everything we can to support them to make that a reality. So thank you. Thanks, girls. Thanks. So, <laughs> that concludes the superintendent's report, Mr. Fuchs. Thank you, Dr. Hicks. <clears throat> um, so with that, uh, move on to finances. Mr. Mancuso? Sure, just uh, a couple things. We, uh, am, I am going to ask you to accept the controller's audit on transportation. Uh, you received all that information much earlier, but we didn't actually take it for your acceptance to, to a board meeting. Um, if there's any questions on that. The only other thing I did want to mention on the financials is the increase for petty cash for the athletic events. Um, the um, $2 entry fee uh, for the events has just caused too many singles not to be there, so we, we wanted to increase that. The, um, if there's any questions on that, I'll, I'll move to the next item. Certainly, yep. Next item is the intermunicipal agreement with the town of Clarence. Uh, we had that meeting with the town of Clarence in August, and we thanked them for the second approval of a uh, resource officer. So now we have two school resource officers, one based at the high school, one at the middle school, but they will be traveling to all the elementary schools. And uh, this addendum to the agreement, which didn't need to be um, redone completely, is to add the second one and then to put in the dollar amount and you see the hourly rate that's in there and that comes to for a uh, uh, a year no more than the thirty thousand dollars that the retired uh, troopers can make any questions any questions on the financial items no. okay. and again just to, to reiterate um, so every year we'll be uh, approving a new agreement with for the uh, SRO with the town? It's a, it sunsets every year? Uh, it, it actually will continue, but um, uh, in this case with the two officers instead of one, and then there's a slight change in the dollar amount. So that might be something that would we'd have to look at every year. Okay. And then just uh, for clarity, you want us to accept the transportation audit, um, just so there's no, no confusion. We have a general item F1 financial report. Will that cover it, or do we need to add uh, No, that, that would cover it. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions on the financials? If no questions, could I have a motion to approve items F1 to F3? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Personnel, Dr. Patek. Thank you, Mr. Fuchs. You also have an addendum before you for the instructional personnel. Uh, so you have resignations, uh, request for leave of absence, various appointments, uh, specifically uh, approval in, of an independent contractor, extracurricular, the winter sports are here for your review this evening, the fall sports are for approval, you previously did also approve them, but as you'll note on the uh, memorandum there are some uh, additions. Activity advisors, uh, additions at the high school as well as the middle school, um, appointing a mentor for the 2018-19 school year, summer curriculum projects, summer guidance, fall curriculum projects, presentation compensation, and modifications to the substitute teacher list, as well as the addendum, which, which simply changes uh, the date of appointment and date of probationary appointment. Does anybody have any questions on the instructional section? Seeing none, can I have a motion to approve items P1 to P7? I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's carried. All right, non-instructional. You also have an uh, amendment to previous board action, a change in status, various resignations, including uh, one for retirement after 30 years of service, various appointments, uh, 
we think we're fully staffed, but uh, we, we will still have some changes at the October board meeting with information we received today. But you'll, you see here we have appointment of monitors, teacher aides, uh, custodian, and so on, and modifications to the substitute list with additions to the cleaner list as well as the teacher aid monitor list. Any questions on non-instructional? None. Can I have a motion for P8 to P12? I move. Do I have a second? Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's carried. Dr. Hicks, special needs for student activities? Um, very light month for special education. Ten committee on special education school age students and three preschool students for your approval tonight. And very light month. <clears throat> Is there any questions on uh, the special needs and student activities? If none, could I have a motion to approve? Second. Do I have a second? I move. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's carried. Uh, we have board development. Uh, first item under board development is a revision of the memorial policy. There's actually two memorial policies listed with some small differences between the two. So I will just kick that one back to you, Mr. Fuchs. Thank you, Dr. Hicks. All right, so just as a, a grounding for those in attendance, um, at our June um, meeting, uh, there was a request for a dedication in one of the buildings, and the board felt as though the current policy was very uh, general and the, uh, the majority of us thought more definition uh, would, would uh, be in order uh, to avoid confusion going forward. Um, we've had a couple um, times of feedback, and what we have in front of us is the current version that encapsulates some, but probably not all the feedback from every board member. Uh, so with that, I guess I'll open it up to any comments on the existing uh, or the most current version that's in the packet this evening. Again, understanding at this point we're not taking action this evening unless we have a you know, broad consensus and we so choose to do so. Does anybody have any comments on the current version? I think we have two versions, right, Mike? One, one current kicks the little items, benches, small items to a approval by grounds and or building principal. And the, other one, and the other one has that coming to us. That's the main difference between the two versions. That's correct. Yep. Um, I did a little research um, as far as like uh, Harris Hill, for instance, they have a tendency when someone retires, when it's a long-standing retirement, like 20, 30 years, or someone who's had a major impact on the school, they tend to want to uh, plant a tree, a bush, uh, put a bench at the playground, or put a bench in front of the school and a little nameplate dedicated to that person. So, um, but I did check with other schools like Ledgeview and Clarence Center don't do any of that. So I guess um, like the Harris Hills had this long-standing tradition, be it's over 30 years old because the original trees on the one side of the building, the kindergarten wing, are now like full-grown, like 30-year planted trees. And I guess it's just carried on, from my understanding, what's been told to me is it's just carried on. So that's the only thing that um, I would like to see still be able to happen because I feel like it's been done for a very long time. And it's not like we're gonna have a forest out there, it's just, I think most of the teachers that have been there a really long time have retired in the last, like last, this year, current last year. So I just would like them to be able to possibly do something, not like name buildings or anything to that effect. I would just like to see like if that's still available for them where they can get like approval from buildings and grounds or principals or. And we did discuss there's a number of uh, traditions at, at various buildings, including transportation as their own tradition that, and how we might continue those that are long-standing and, and fit within the, the boundaries of a policy that we were to adopt. And I think both of these allow for that to occur. It's just a matter of who you want to sign off on it. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really have any major issue with, you know, essentially delegating the, the, um, you know, the smaller memorials, essentially the non-naming rights type things to the, to the building principal and and grounds and just do it in terms of, of maintenance. The ones that I've always been more concerned about is, is the naming policies. And I think that the, if I want, uh, had to highlight the, the major change is that it's, it's giving 
guidance on the, um, you know, when we would think naming a, a, a building or, or, a, or a room is appropriate versus not and give us guidance on, on that. And, and I think that both of these policies kind of uh, do a decent job of, of that. Any other comments? Generally speaking, I'll speak for myself. I'm, I'm pleased with the, this draft. I think it's come a long way. Um, I could, I'm sure we could critique a few words here or there, but I think it's captured the theme of, of most everything we've talked about. Any, any other comments? No. So again, it's just informational. Um, so I guess what I'd suggest, unless anybody has a strong opinion otherwise, is we leave it as such for this meeting. Um, I think we have a, a working document at this point and we can move to a formal adoption at the next meeting. Uh, and if, if anybody wants to make any changes, we can certainly make motions and, and do it formally at that last meeting, uh, next meeting before we adopt the policy. If, if I could make a suggestion, yep. since we do have it down to two policies with essentially one small change, maybe we should, maybe not mm -hmm. at the meeting, but let's let's decide that you know if which one we want to carry forward, unless there's yeah. unless there's a lot of contention between the yeah. two. I agree. Carry one forward. I mean, my, my personal opinion is the small things, the benches, the, the trees, the Sounds shrubs, good. grounds, and the building principal, the grounds, and, and yeah. the yeah. superintendent. Either way, and then we're out of that. And then the larger item, we have the same option. Yeah. Yeah, so I agree. I, I would agree with that. I think that's, that's a consensus. Change on that. So we can move forward with that, that yeah. version. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. So, Mr. Fuchs, if we were to number them, the very first one that appeared was version one, and the second one was version two. It's version two that will move forward Correct. next month? Yes. Okay. Um, second, under board development, we have a number of different uh, field trips and competitions. There's the uh, high school corral field trip to Fredonia College Lodge from October 25th through the 27th. Uh, these are all very traditional and occur each year. Model UN field trip to Gannon University November 2nd to 3rd. Uh, music kids to perform with the all, we have one student, an exceptional bassoon player who qualified for the all national orchestra. They uh, have a performance in Orlando, Florida and he is going down to that. Um, we also have students going to the All-State Music Festival and the traditional grade five trip to Camp Seneca Lake for Clarence Center is there along with Girls Varsity Volleyball for the Horseheads Tournament October 19th through the 20th to stay overnight. All very standard. Does anybody have any questions on any of these items? Um, for the Clarence Center grade five trip, Parent chaperones are go as well for the trip to help. Yes, some do. Are parents given um, some sort of direction and guidance as far as as being chaperones um, and what they are expected to do or not to do? Yeah, uh, I can answer that definitely. Sure. Yeah. I'm involved in the trip. Correct. Previously, there, there's a handbook they're, pro they're provided with. There's also a parent meeting, mandatory parent meeting, where they're given their their instructions and what they're supposed to be doing. The teachers do a really good job of going over that with them. <clears throat> if no other questions, uh, could I have a motion to approve the field trips, items B2 to B7? I'll make a motion to approve B2 through 7. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's carried. All right. We'll come to the second public comment session for this evening. If anybody has something matter to address the board. We have a microphone on either side. You can state your uh, name and address. Seeing none at this time, uh, we have in our packet the last item we have is some informational items on some upcoming meetings. Uh, the next month's meeting will actually be taking place at the middle school um, with a pre-meeting with the administrators followed by a meeting a normal monthly meeting in the Clarence Middle School Lecture Hall at 7 p.m. And uh, in late October, we have the annual uh, New York State School Boards Conference uh, that a few of us are attending. So with that, 
Uh, I guess I would entertain a motion to adjourn to executive session for the purpose of discussing matters leading to the evaluation of a particular person. So moved. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody.